quick demonstration of what we're going to do in Laboratory 2. As you can see I've got the lab script open here. Again you can find the demonstration material inside Blackboard so you can download the actual CAD files. There's some assistance inside the web demos as well. We're going to look at figure circuit 1 and we're going to redesign that circuit from two CE stages to have a two CE stage like this. Now in the lecture notes you'll know we've reduced the bias to the second stage and we've reduced the number of capacitors that we can count inside the circuit. That's advantageous to us. So you're going to design with an overall gain of 200. We want to split that gain between the two BJTs. Ballpark gain of about 14 each. We may need to do some splitting of the emitter. I'll come on to that in due course. What we would really do on silicon is design like this. That's a little too advanced for where we're at at the moment, but it will be explained as we go through the course. Essentially we would have differentials, current sources, DC level shifts. More on that later. Right, to PowerPoint. Here we have a PowerPoint copy of the circuit. And what I'm going to do now is go again to my pointer options. Okay. To design this circuit, what we want to do for a start, again, we're going to have to design the bias around these nodes. Okay, that's what's important. So we need to set up our collector current IC. Therefore, we're going to define effectively VCE. Okay, now because we have the capacitor bypass uh, at this point here, this component R4 is set for DC bias only. Okay, this is an AC short circuit, so for AC signals we'll sit at a different level of DC. So we have to be a bit careful about the design on this one. So, the design is left open to you. You can choose whatever values you want. So if we assume that we've got a 10 volt supply, we might want this point here, the absolute voltage at this node, to be, for example, 5 volts. Okay? 5 volts, 1 milliamp, whatever, are ones easily calculated as um, 5 kilograms. IB, well how much current is coming into the base? We'll use the same procedure as we've done in the past, IC over beta. How much current is coming down this bias network? Minimum of 10 IB. Okay, therefore down here we would have 11 IB. So again, we're going to do exactly the same design as we would do before. However, we need to work out what the gain of this stage is going to be here. How do we work out what the gain is? It's going to be proportional to R3 divided by little re, possibly R4. R4's bypass, so it's only RE. So that's where we need to, might, might need to split the emitter. We'll do exactly the same thing for the second stage. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, how do we split the emitter? So let's run through one or two equations, shall we? RC is equal to VCC minus VCE, okay, possibly minus VE, okay, over IC. Okay, there's our simple start point. RE, how, how do you calculate that impedance? In this term here, RE is equal to RE1 plus RE2. So RE would be equal to some term VE over approximately IC. Okay, you'd have to calculate what value of VE you want. I was tend to suggest you draw a little sketch. Okay, this is volts, this is VCC, 10 volts. This is zero. If you waste some voltage, this might be VE. VCC has to sit somewhere in the middle of those two to get maximum symmetrical swing. However, you have a bypass capacitor, so you can go down lower and you can go below this line here. You can go below that line. But that's for you to calculate. Okay, so now you've got the equations for RC and RE. The equation again for um, your bias components, uh, R1 and R2. Um, so the bottom resistor, I'll call it R bottom, is equal to um, 10 times IC over beta. Okay, and our top, the top resistance would be 11 times IC over beta, okay? 
and that's ballpark it. Now what we need to do is draw the small signal equivalent model for this design. Okay, here's our transistor model. Okay, we know that our output is going to be RC and I've added in an RE component. This resistor here would be RE1. Okay. These components here are our bias network. I've called them R top and that's in parallel with R bottom. Okay. IB comes in here and the current source is IB beta. This value is RC. AV of this circuit is approximately equal to RC divided by RE plus RE1. Okay, so if you want this to equal 14 and you've already got some calculations for, A, uh, for RC, you can calculate RE. RE equals VT over IE and you can solve for RE1. So there we go, you can perform this first design. Now this circuit is quite a bit more complicated. What we have to do here, we have to set this node to a particular voltage. Okay. Let's for example run through this again, 10 volts, we want to set this one to 5 volts. Okay. We're going to set the emitter up here to 1 volt as an example. Therefore we will know VCE, VE down the bottom here and we will be able to calculate our value of V um, R13 in this case. Okay. We do a quick Kirchhoff's voltage loop around here Okay, we now have to go back into this circuit to find this node voltage. This node voltage is now set by VE plus VBE. Okay, so VBEQ4 plus VE equals VC. That's where this is DC biased. Okay, then we will then have to go forward, calculate this bias, so this will not be biased at the same DC level, it will be biased significantly lower. Let me sketch what I mean. Okay. So, we have our supply line, 10 volts. Our output stage, okay, here, is at 5 volts. So this is the DC level, let's call that VC Q4. VC Q4 equals 5 volts. Therefore, because of the current flowing down here and VBE, this voltage, VC Q3, is probably going to be around 1.6 volts. Okay, we have to remember that our first stage is only going to amplify by 14, our second stage is going to amplify by 14. So this signal coming in here is going to be very, very small. The amplified output is going to be quite small, which will then go into this stage and provide our larger gain. So this should all work quite well. Well, that's all I'm going to 